Good evening. It is Into Darkness Enterprise build update number five. And we are finally getting to the meat of the situation with Azteking. We are going to apply Aztecs to the top of the saucer. We're using uh, this piece. It is it has been primed. It has had a base coat of the uh, undercoat gray put on it. It's had a given a day to dry at least so uh, our surface is prepared. Um, one fundamental note. This is true with every template set I make that has saucer temp that has saucer sections in it. One pie slice, one here, is equal to two of these. There are pluses and minuses. You'll hear me say positive and negative a lot. There are positive and negative shapes in each pie slice that translate directly to how they go down on the saucer. Now you can start anywhere you'd like. Um, I have a superstition, a, a tradition if you will. I always do the front two sections. Right down the center, right in front of the bridge. And it's a simple question of picking a side and staying with the pattern. This pattern, I, I'm sad to say it does not show up very well black on black on the camera. But hopefully you'll get a, a gist of it as it goes along. I am using, before I uh, get too far into it, let me grab the... Now I designed these templates to mimic what is in the instructions. People have questioned as to whether or not those are authentic or not. Probably they're not. They're probably close enough and they're close enough for me. Uh, it was a CG file of a mesh wrapped around a CG model. Uh, depending on which, which filters and which layers they turned on, it could look different in any given time. So I'm sticking to what is in the instructions. It uh, will give you a good two-tone pattern build on that pattern uh, with more levels of, of complexity if you want. Um, you can use two colors that are very close together so you don't see a lot of differences in the pattern until you uh, look at it in a light. You can uh, make this your own but you have to start somewhere and where I'm going to start is right here. The bottom piece. Handle it a little bit and knock some of the sticky down. It won't bite you. Now this long, this piece here goes, and I want to make sure that it is in camera, it goes all the way out past the edge, past the beacon. It sits on the end of the saucer. And all I'm doing is lightly poking that, moving it into place, and tapping it down. I am not putting a ton of pressure on it. The vinyl is good enough, it will stick by itself. Now, to follow what we're doing, if you can see here, what we're doing is this darker pattern right here. This, this, you notice know, there's a darker gray and a lighter gray. I'm interested in putting the darker gray down on this next piece of, uh, next piece of uh, hull plating, which means it is this Dancing man shape, tulip shape, Aztec shape, whatever you want to call them, plus the two tiny little feet here. So what I'm doing is simply plucking those up. And making sure that I'm on the other side of the on the side of this scribed hull line, you actually want to get a little bit of the other color between those, get a little bit of relief in there. I'm not a big believer in um, spanning more than a hull section with a pattern. Some people like to just do one pattern up the side. That's personal choice. I, I, I don't care for it myself. But if you do, more power to you. Okay, going back to this same hull section, and I'm peeling up just 
the tulip set, the tulip shape. Okay, that's the guy. Officer, that's the guy. Okay, and I'm just doing a little bit of this and that, a little bit of sleight of hand. I'll use the exacto on the tip in the center. And this has to be the stem touches this bottom piece. I mean, it goes down to that hole line. It does not touch the piece, but it goes down to that hole line and it sits in the center. So it's laid down, it's in position, but I have not mushed it. I am going to take a little bit of light finger pressure. Boom, that one's done. Now you can see that there is still an empty area in this hall in this section of the hall this empty area here and by a weird coincidence not really because it's planned that way here are the no here are those exact negative pieces and they go right next to it on this hall I'll start with this piece and sorry I'm trying to work I'll, I'll work where you can see it. I'll start with this piece. Again, do a little handling. And it's important that this piece right here lines up with this piece. Again, we know that it sits on the it sits on the curve of this inscribed line. It extends all the way over to its corresponding gap right there. And you could start there if you'd like. Make sure that this piece here fits in the gap that is given to it by the piece before. And we also know that it needs to sit it needs to sit on this hull line. So we know that that is in the correct space and it corresponds to this empty space here. Now I've noticed from all this moving around that that is sticking up a little bit. So I am going to push it down closer there. Now the other, the other corresponding piece right here, I know goes, and it goes here to where this point, well let me just place it and then I'll, I'll point out the features of it. So you stick it down. move it a tiny bit. You can also use toothpicks to move these around rather than exactos if you are uh, skittish about nicking the paint but I've been doing this enough that it, uh, I'm pretty adept at handling the exacto until I cut myself and embarrass myself. Um, again you can see that this bottom line sits completely against this scribed line and that this point here should end at the end of this uh, this whole line here this uh, grid line ooh grid lines grid line that is a worship word you will not speak it uh, sorry <laughs> Omega Glory was on lately um, but what we have left now of this piece is this. This is the remaining the remainders of that hull section. Now this is going to be easy to fill in because this corner up here 
and this corner up here, in fact this whole top, line up with this section. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it down in place and then show you that in detail. I line up this corner that I know it has to fill and I'm staying try to stay just on top of that line. I just split that line. I don't want to overlap I don't want to be too far inside and I don't want to go spill over into the next panel. As you can see it's just sitting inside that corner and that corner. Now before I stick any of this down, let me pull this up because it's there you go. I'm going to follow this edge. It's sticking to it, so there you go. Follow that edge, wrap it around that, that uh, curve in the grid section. So this corner lines up, that corner lines up, this arc follows the, the uh, grid line. And then these just kind of pat them down, make sure they're not distorted or stretched. And there you go, that's the bottom design of a that's the, the bottom section of a pie wedge placed on two separate hull sections positive and negative and let's go on to the next one using the instructions again this and again this is where we started and so this is the one we have to do, do all of our work off of the next thing up on the next hull section is a dark line okay well the next section has a dark line. It has a dark line. So I'm going to, again, do a little bit of this and that. And I'm going to line, you can see that, start that line in that bottom corner, tap it in place, let it fall, and then using the X Acto, I'm going to nudge it into place so that it is following that curve just like that the next dark piece that we need is this negative piece it's what I, it is a um, it is the surrounding of this tulip shape or tree shape so it is the negative piece there is also a negative piece here that goes on the upper corner a negative piece that goes here in the upper corner a negative piece that goes here along the center of the top and a negative piece that goes along the side. So the next negative piece that I want is this one. Now we don't have a corner to line this up against. I mean, you know, I'm going to So it's possible I'm doing this it's possible that we're going to have to end up repositioning this. So it's doubly important not to use too much pressure when you put it down. I know that it goes right about right about here. Now the reason I know that is because I know that the width of this tulipy piece or tree piece is what goes in here what would have gone in there it actually is going to go over here so let I'm sorry I know I'm doing a lot here and here's but hopefully you're you're following along let me move that up just a little bit again we know that this edge is straight so following along that edge and leaving this to fall flat should tell me that that's about in the spot it is and I think we're going to be darn close. I don't think there's going to need to be a lot of moving around. Now, that was this piece. The next piece that goes up, we know goes in the corner. So we skip over this piece and we use this piece that goes up in the corner. So if that piece goes in the corner, and we know that there is a matching piece to that over here, and it goes in this corner, 
then by eyeballing we can do a better estimate of how things need to fit in the center of them. I'll go over ahead and take this one out. We know that it is we know that it is the counterpoint to this piece. It needs to go right here. See how we're starting to form the the negative shape of the uh, tulip there? This piece we have this one. This out of the way. This piece corresponds to this dark piece right here and we know that the top of that the stem of that needs to touch in the center needs to touch that grid line okay so we line let me get a toothpick out here so I can show you what I'm doing we line this up in such a way that this piece here fills in between these on both sides so we know that that's in the right position we know that this is touching the grid touches the arc of the grid line and you just lay that flat now from that I could tell that that's lining up but this arm to come down to the hair there you go see I told you we had that in the right spot this creates a negative condition right here here and here same here here and here so guess what goes on this panel? Well, the positives that we have left from that same panel go there. And we'll start with this piece that we know has to line up against this gap. We have the tulip shape. This is the positive shape that goes in this panel. And it needs to go in such a way that lines up with the gap here. This, this gap right here that tells us the length or the, the thickness. Plus we know that this piece has to sit, has to leave a gap this wide right here. So what I'm doing is I'm simply going to lay it down and I'm dragging it across the hull, eyeballing it centered. I want this point to line up with the gap. I want these two points to touch each other. Let me do this uh, away from the camera here. I'm just laying it in place. Working that around to make that gap fit, make these two points touch. Now I think this side needs to come up a bit, so it's not stuck down, but I am working that gap to make a uniform shape, a uniform thickness of, of negative right there, and then I just tap that down. I fill in the rest of these missing pieces. Now we know that this, this, these pieces here, this one and this one, have to go along the top. They go along the top of the sec uh, hull section. They rest on that arc. I know that there's another one that goes here. That is, it touches the point. It touches this point here. And rests against the hull, the hull line there. So that goes there and down. And now I know that this last piece here finishes that top row. Let me stick it out of my hand a little bit. It finishes off this top row, which means it has to rest its upper edge on the arc of the grid line, plus it has to touch this point here 
So touching that point there, resting along the arc of the of the hull of the grid uh, of the grid. There you go. Now that's two pieces. Now how long did that take for us to do two sections? And I'm, believe me, I'm going slow because I'm ex stopping and explaining this and doing it on camera. Um, I probably would be done with at least one of these by now if, if uh, I was doing it at normal speed. But I want to make sure you, you are clear on how these go down. We're up to the third section now. Third section is very simple. It's a, it's a gap line. It is a big fat tree, and. A negative shape around it so with less explanation this time I'm just going to go ahead and do this whole section the gap line I know that is black is going on this one over here it does not go here it goes over here so I'll go ahead and take the gap line make sure my camera okay tap that in place Make sure that the corners are all touching and that it is following the, oh, I can do better than that. And I'm not trying to show off, but when I'm pulling these things up to re replace them, um, I'm not getting any paint pull up. So take that for what it's worth. And I know that this piece also, the, the negative for this piece, this dealy, um, I know that it fills the top of the hull plate section. It goes up to the corner goes around the top arc and goes in that corner. It completely fills the remainder of this hull, uh, hull section. So let me go ahead and put that down and knock it into place. Okay, so now we know from what we've done there that by the time comes to pull off the the main shape again doing a little bit of this, a little bit of dancing that it floats in the center of the uh, of, of the hull section. It does not touch any of the sides except here and here those are the only two edges that touch the sides it doesn't run along the top it doesn't run along the bottom but you can tell by looking at the gap from this point to this point where it needs to line up and I simply line that up on the, I need to lay this down I'm not used to holding holding it up in the air so we I line that up there, more or less lay it flat. I have not touched anything down yet. It's lined up between this point and this point. I'm looking at making a fairly or making an even uh, space between the bottom of this shape and the arc of the hull section. So it needs to go down just a wee bit. More or less leaving the vinyl flat will take care of it. And you see how it doesn't go to the top of the hull section here. There's that little bit of space there. And there's three sections. Three sections done. We just did this one. So the next one up is this. Now the next one up here, since I like putting down the uh, sometimes I like putting down the section that has the most of the uh, masking in it I'll work like you know crisscross back and forth so the next one 
has all of these black pieces in it here and then it has the uh, uh, the tree shape uh, next to it there so let me pull out the black pieces that need to go here which are okay there's the corner piece okay this corner piece if you can tell from looking here this corner piece touches the hull and touches the side. It touches the arc at the bottom. It touches the arc at the bottom. It touches the arc at the bottom and it touches the edge of the plate there. Sorry, the edge of the plate there and the touch of the bottom there. So I'll go ahead and put the corresponding one on next. And it goes exactly the same way. It touches that. And you'll notice something also. Not only does it touch that and this but it also lines up with these pieces and these these this this line here lines up that line here lines up so those two are on this one is kind of a uh, a weird one it's a very involved shape so let me uh, And I'll tell you the truth, let me do these ones next. Go ahead and get these out of the way because we know that those go into the lower corners. Those are easy enough to align. Okay, now see how complicated I don't know that you talk from there, how complicated this shape is. It's gonna work better for me to go ahead and pull out the tree shape out of the middle of that it's just a little bit more elaborate and again there are I, put, I include an extra an extra pie wedge so if you ever rip a shape hopefully you will only rip one of each because uh, if you ever rip or, or uh, stretch anything look for the extra one on the sheet and use that See, this is the, and you can tell the, the pieces are getting thinner and thinner the, the uh, smaller they get. This is the way, the piece that goes right here. Now it centers, and we can tell where the center is because we can line it up on this center piece here. But it goes on the other side of this, of the uh, arc. The arm comes down, sorry, the arm comes down so that it matches where either side of where that piece lands. And it does the same thing over here now. It's possible when the time comes, we might need to pick that up and reposition it a tiny bit to line up over here, but for right now, all is well. And then the last pieces that go positively here are right above this piece and right above that piece. They touch the arc of the grid above it. Okay. Now looking at this, you can see maybe that piece, maybe that uh, gap is a little bit wider than that. I think this needs to be pushed down a little bit so I'm just going to lift it up and I push it down so that these gaps are equal. Now you can see what, what the piece that I had left why that might have been tough to pull all off at once 
and why I chose to take the smaller pieces out of the middle of it. See, left by itself, it's kind of an odd shape to deal with. Sorry, left by itself, it's kind of an odd shape to deal with. So I felt it easier to remove pieces out of the center of it so that this would lift off easier as one piece. Okay, so the good thing about this is we know it lines up with these top corners and this top edge and these corners all line up with the top of the hull section. I know I sound like I'm repeating myself, but sometimes you just have to do it over and over until it, it uh, becomes second nature. So I'm going to line this up with this top corner. You see, I know that corner is a constant. That constant has not changed, but I can tell by how much space this took up that maybe, maybe that arm needs to move up a little bit so that they line up. So I just increase the, pick that up and move it up so that these two points line up better. And then we know that that lines up in that corner. And that lines up with the uh, arc of the sensor hull. So these should all be, this looks like it might want to be a little bit more curvy. So let's move that up. Yeah. Okay, and look how quick we got another two sections done. Now the shapes start getting smaller and it starts getting a little bit more interesting as we go up. Okay, the piece that I want next is, it starts to wrap around the, uh, the phaser bank here. I want this strip to go to the bottom of this piece. So this is a single strip. Okay, now I overlapped, you see where it, it's sitting on top of that phaser bank. Well, I just lay it down and then take the knife and trim it out around it. I don't try to cut it before I put it in place. So with that going there, then we know that this piece, which is the next one up, We know, or hopefully we have learned by now, that it needs to be on this panel, but it needs to be the thickness of that piece. So I pick a point that is the thickness of that piece, and I lay it down and work the curve around, again stopping at the phaser bank and then trim the phaser bank away. Okay, just working our way up this zigzag piece which is not part of your normal Aztec pattern. I kind of like it. It's throws it throws it a little curveball. It's nice. We know that that lines up here and is that thick so we space it that far away and again I'm going to trim out the phaser bank I'm going to cheat and jump ahead just for one second because I want to show you something the third piece up I mean the, not the not the very next piece on the pattern but the Piece, excuse me. <coughs> the piece after that is the one that goes at the top of the hull section, and we know because it has those again. It fits in the top corners of both of those, plus follows the top follows that same arc. But what it gives me uh, negatively is what I want you to see. Okay, put that in place, knock that down, and work it around to. To where that corner is in that 
this corner of the vinyl is in the corner of the panel might need to push it in just a little bit but you can see the negative shape that this gives me this is exactly what I need to place it gives me all the guide I need to place the piece here that would otherwise be kind of floating in the center I know that it has to line up with this gap right here so that gives me a good starting place I line it up there oops easier said than done I line it up there Tamp it down. This, see that there's a little bit of black in between there, so we know that that does not go quite all the way to the top of the grid line. It hangs off of it a little bit, and then that line, this piece here, lines up with this line. It aligns with a line. I know I'm sorry, saying line a lot. Sorry about that. So now we're down to it. We got one more section to go. And one more section to go is this guy. Now he kind of demands to be pulled off. Knock that out. Okay, pull. See what I'm doing? I've got too much off of the sheet at one time, so I'm just pulling these little guys. out this is the piece I'm interested in so let me put these back on the paper okay this is the guy I'm interested in and a little bit of how do you do on the hands Okay. This guy lines up right here. We know he fits along the bottom of the saw, the bottom of that hole section. Fills that in. Now we've got a little spotlight bump there to worry about. I'm going to just mash it over top of that. But that gives us the location for this because we know it has to line up with that gapped area there. And I'm going to eyeball the corresponding one over here, knowing that I will, I can reposition it if I need it. But I think that's pretty close. So given that we've put this piece down. I can tell you that this little guy here goes at the very top and these stair steppy pieces may go on either side which leaves that piece go here and it again it lines up with this top corner and you see how what a fan I am of lining things up with this top corner top corner there lines up top corner there lines up now you might be able to guess from looking at it that this piece is going to have to once that gets laid in place this piece here is going to have to move down I was eyeballing it before but now that I have that measurement I could pick it up move it back into place and from that I can have pretty much tell that this one also is going to have to get moved down now as I, as I go and complete the rest of it 
I might have to end up coming back and readjusting these ones once I do. I'm going to work this way around it till I get to this back piece, till I get to this gap. And then I'm going to work from here back around till I get to gap. So I'm just going to start in the center and move out that way. I'm, I don't mean to don't mean to uh, confuse you. I'm not going to go this 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 this. I'm going to go these two these two these two, and then come back and do these two these two these two these two. I didn't mean to say that I was going to do like this one and then this one and then that one and then that one. But that's that's a piece, and I got nothing left on the paper. That's a piece of pie wedge, and it got two pieces of uh, hull section. And it's a simple matter of rinse and repeat.